Did you bring a light? Productions presents a Philips Noramco tape recorder captured on a very slow Windows Movie Maker where once you push start capture it takes a few seconds before it even starts videoing. Anyway, here it is. I got this machine off of eBay. Um, whenever I got it, now this is a video, if you saw the unboxing video, and it had Evan in it, and I was unboxing this machine, then you'll hear about that. So, well, anyway, I was not thinking, oh, it had no deteriorated belts. I was right, it had no deteriorated belts. But it did have deteriorated rubber idlers. Just for the remind and the fast forward, rubber idlers had deteriorated, and um, I had to replace them with O-rings from a hardware store. As a matter of fact, here's one of the packages for o for one of the O-rings, and after that, it was able to work. Anyway. Um, this is a machine is made in Holland. This is a Norelco labeled one, but it's obvious it is a Philips, so Norelco and Philips are the same. And um, it's in good condition except the top cover here has a crack right there, which is very disappointing. I don't know if that was already there or if it happened during shipping. But also there's a little there would have been a little sticking out notch right there that came off. It has the notch on this side as you can see right there a little bump but I'm hoping it was already there because if it was by shipping that would that would be very 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 bad so let's show how it does without tape without reels rewind you can't see it turning though it's the way the camera looks you, you don't even notice it but it is and to stop it you just push the button that way, like this, and it raises back up. Then you got fast forward. It's turning, but of course you can you don't notice it turning on the video. And then to play, push the middle. Now, luckily, other two idlers, one that drove the take-up drive, and the one that drove the flywheel from the motor, were still good thank goodness especially the one for the take-up drive because that one was not the kind that could just have been replaced with an o-ring and if that one was deteriorated I would have had to send it off to Terry rubber and rollers now let's put some tapes on and show it operate oh yeah by the way the um, circuitry is still good the capacitors are good except for one thing the tone control does not work it's just you know all the way up you can turn it all the way down but it doesn't change the tone at all it's probably a bad capacitor but that's not that big a deal so I'm just left it how it was I don't know if that would get that copyright crap but it was um, on one of those music channels on TV at a friend's house and I put held the microphone up to the speaker. And the microphone stores into this little thing on the side here. Which is really cool. And by the way, the batteries go in here, but you probably saw you would have seen that in that other video, the unboxing video. So I don't have to explain all that. Because the thing is if I do it'll just take more time. The video will be way too long. And it will you know, all those kind of things so yeah and in there that's where you see the model number now there's some foam in there that is crumbling and you don't want to push your finger in there or else you will put a hole in the speakers diaphragm because it's the speakers right there but anyway it's model EL 3586 slash 54 It has two DIN jacks on the side, one for the microphone slash line out, and one for probably for power. So that's where the microphone plugs in. 
or a cord that can be used to hook it up to a line in or output, which this didn't come with one of those cords, but luckily I, I already have a couple of those cords that went with some Philips and Rocco cassette recorders. Okay. So when you make a recording, let's get a ka. Well, first of all, I'm we get a close up of the meter. I was saying cluck I was trying to say close up. Um, the record button is back here. Hold that down. When you hold it down, it actually turns it on. So you turn the electronics on so you can set your level, which I really like that. Because then you don't have to worry about trying to set it every time you have the tape going, which is a really annoying thing because it has no pause control. I'm having to tilt this back when I'm showing it because the lighting is so horrible. It went like this, you can't even see it. Seriously, the lighting sucks, but anyway, um, I speak to the mic and I'm being able to set the level, so a good for volume for up, um, up close microphone speak voice doing is level around two. So, um, or actually, that's good for line level, but also pretty good for voice level. So, let's use that level setting and let's start our recording here. I'm now recording on this machine. This machine recording here is AC by now recording on this machine. This machine is AC bias for definite definite way. Audio quality on this thing is superb. Let's see how this sounds. Okay? Oh wait, let's set it a level up higher actually. Show it doesn't get very sensitive to sound. The level's up high. Let's see how this is. I'm speaking at arm's length distance with the level all the way up. Let's see how this is. Okay, this recorder has a hidden secret. I'm sure many of you have heard of the classic 3 inch reel and the 3.5 inch reel. The common sizes for portable reel to reel tape recorders, which most of them can take 3 and 3.5 and inch reels. Some only 3, but it's common. Then you got the 5 inch reels, then you got the 7 inch reels, then you got the 10.5 inch reels. Well, did you know that there's another size that is not as common? but does exist. That is the 4 inch reel. And this machine as far as my collection goes, well in my collection is the only machine that can take up to 4 inch reels. And of course the tape of course has to go under the reel like that and you know you know things like that. But yes this can take four inch reels. These are four inch, not three and a half inch, not five inch. Four inch. They're probably not that easy to come by, but I managed to find some at an estate sale. Some of those reels. Anyway, um, with the four inch reels, the tapes, the reels come off the machine a little bit, you know, off the edge. So you can't put the cut the cover on when you're using four inch reels. So let's see how this is with four inch reels. I mean, I thought it was the weirdest sound, but it was right at the end of the recording when the microphone was kind of being moved around. I'm now recording and I'm running with this 4 inch reels. Okay, let's see how this is. So when I rewind, it's a little. It did better that time, but when it's towards the beginning, I had to give it a little. Ah, oh, hit the freaking light bulb. Stupid light bulb! Stupid light bulb! 
Stupid light bulb! Stupid light bulb! Stupid light bulb! Uh, I like to make fun of it for a living, and I'm deformed. Ha! Huh. I like to make funny faces for a living, and I'm deformed. Hi! I like to make funny faces for a living, and I'm deformed. I did not intend to show that recording. I forgot I did it. I'm not recording. I'm running with this four-inch reels. Okay, let's see how this is. Now, the rewind isn't that strong because the original rewind belt is a little bit loose. I didn't replace it because I didn't want the supply reel to be too hard to turn. Because sometimes if the supply reel has a little bit hard time turning, um, then whenever you get towards the end of the tape, it gets a little bit hard time pulling the tape steadily, and therefore it tends to have speed problems. Not only, I haven't had that in this machine. Of course, I don't have a tighter belt on there. But just from experience with other machines, where that kind of thing happened from it being too hard to turn the supply reel. So yeah, that's why I left the original rewind belt on there so it would turn as easy as possible. So when I rewind... Um... You know. Fast forward is good. Because it's not driven through a belt. It's just directly coupled the idler to the other, to the spindle. Now is how it recorded music with a song called Circuits by File Not Found. But let's go to a direct hookup. How about that? 